tell most people that where I go because I'm slightly embarrassed to say I go to Wigan because they have a total lack of understanding. They say, oh, you go to Wigan. Why do you go to Wigan? That's 30 odd miles away. They say, oh, well, I'll go to Wigan Casino. Well, first of all, they think it's gambling. So you put them right. You say it's not a casino. It used to be a theatre, but now it's a discotheque. And they say, oh, they say, uh, plenty of girls there, like. You say, oh, yeah, there's a lot of girls there. But they mean plenty of girls there to kind of pick up, but I mean there's plenty of girls there, you know, friends, like. Well, you know, that's not part of it. And they say, uh, have a few beers, do you, like. Well, you know, you have to say, oh, no, uh, well, they don't serve beer. They don't serve beer. Why don't they serve beer? Oh, well, it doesn't open till half past 12, and, uh, you know, the licence won't let them serve beer all night. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You say, why not? I wouldn't go to a club, you know, all night without beer. And you say, oh, well, there's other things to do. Can we get all the brushes back to the room, please, as quickly as possible? Harry, what's it like up there now? Take it easy, please! Take it easy, don't push! I think at the moment there's about 120,000 members. Built up over the last three or four years. Stop pushing at the back! Hundreds every day, writing into the club wanting to be members. I suppose on a regular Saturday night, there's probably about 10% of the kids which come from Wigan, the Wigan area. I say Wigan, I'm talking in terms of a 15 mile radius of Wigan. Now the Saturday night thing, it's well advertised, people know we are in existence every week. They organise coaches, they organise train parties, they organise aeroplane charter flights, literally. The flight to Manchester, and they're coming from as far away as the very south of England, Cornwall, or the north of Scotland. went, you know, and they were telling me how good it was. Hey, you know, you don't realise it, what you're missing, like, you know. Stop pushing at the back! So, well, what's it like? And I thought, I was a bit frightened of going at first, like, you know, my first time and everything. And when I first went, it used to be really packed, you know. You used to be waiting outside about two or three hours for it get in. You know, I was frightened of sitting, sitting on this one. I thought, I'm not going to get in. Like, you know, they'll be turning us away. Then I thought, I'd like for it to go every week, but I don't know if it tell me, Dad. Well, I don't know if it tell me Mum either, like, you know, because they might think wrong thing, like, you know, like a lot of parents think, or oh, stopping out all night, you know, getting up to all sorts. I've gone about twice. And I told my mum how much I liked it. And she figured, like, you know, that I want to go every week. And she says, well, you're going to have to tell your dad. Because he's got an idea anyway, you know. But she said, I'm not telling him. So make out his I don't know. So I said, all right. So that's how I got round to it. I asked him when I was looking at this book, pretending that I'd never been before, like, you know. Saying if I sent up for this membership, could I go? The matter is that the Wigan Casino has been in existence for 10 years. We decided to become an all-night session because there is a particular demand from the soul fraternity who wants to stay out all night to follow their kind of music. Because this is what the kids want. It isn't something we want, it's something they want. And so all we've done at this particular location is met a demand. Full stop.
started about 10 years ago, maybe more, with the mods. It was very nationwide then. People used to go from all round about, meet the friends, much as they do now. And the South gradually got to forget its roots in R&B and just started moving with the times, the swinging 60s kind of thing. So what you were left with was this network, this underground network, if you like, of soul clubs. Clubs which play soul music. American rhythm and blues, that is, from the late 60s and early 70s. People refer to it as Northern Soul. I don't think the title has any special significance. It's just that it's played mainly in the North. Now, there are only about, about six all-night clubs left. All in the North are the Midlands. The police, or the authorities, have gradually closed down the others. The first all-nighter to become really popular was the Twisted Wheel in Manchester. It opened in the mid-60s and shut around in 1970. Did you go to sale after left in Bolton? No, I didn't have time. After that, there was various other clubs took over the up the junction at Crewe and uh, the Torch in Stoke. That was going for a few years. And then there's Samantha's in Sheffield. That only got shut down about a year ago. That was a very good place, very friendly. People came from all over England to them. Not really for the music, but rather than the, the sense of belonging, the community feeling. People were nice to each other, so people thought, well, it's worth the travel. Fight for the right to work by socialist worker. Only ten pence. I don't think the fact that it's Wigan's terribly important. It's just that it's an easy place to get to. Tory policies by socialist worker. Only ten pence. And with a slip up in the local bylaws, the casino can stay open all night from Saturday to Sunday, as long as it doesn't serve any alcohol. I think the people who live in Wigan look at us with suspicion, but they haven't done too much for their young people, have they? At least not in the last few years. Not since the heyday of the Industrial Revolution, when Wigan was something and people cared about each other. Of course, working conditions were pretty terrible, but at least there was a sense of community. And that's all gone now. The ant and the grasshopper, everyone knows how the story goes. How the ant was diligent, never spent anything lightly. He laboured wisely and gathered his store for tomorrow. As for the grasshopper, glad of the summer sunshine, light as the wind on the broken water. His song he gave to the summer day, singing where the dance leads are followed. Then came the hard winter, nothing grew, and the cold wind flew, but the end was safe and sound, and the ground carefully counting his pile around him, dividing his time until tomorrow. As for the grasshopper, blown by the north wind's fury, hungering for easy summer. Comes to the ant and says, my brother, give me bread, now is the dance that I must follow. Why did you waste the summer? Summer don't last forever. You're just a idle beggar. You must pay the price, sacrifice. You would not eat me. You took a life easy. Now take the punishment that follows. Now see the grass on my hill like a dry leaf falling, weaving a dance that will last forever. Back goes the ant to his nest to work, to feed, to rest. For him there will always be tomorrow. Well, I think there's something wrong with the world, really. To get enjoyment out of life during the teens and twenties, people do have to build more or less an alternative society just to enjoy themselves. Because they can't, within the normal channels, they can't go to the normal Mecca, Tiffany circuit and enjoy it because it's, you know, it's, it's just not an enjoyable experience. But, uh, you know, if you're working in some very tedious job, you don't want to look forward to something that could go wrong anyway. Well, that's like your week falling through. Well, is your month going to fall through? You know, your year. But if every week you're going somewhere where there's a certain good time, just from the community sense, well, 
it brightens up the people's lives who go. I'm okay with mine, really, but if you've got a very boring job, I don't suppose there's anything to fill your mind except stupid little things, what people think about at work, but if there's something kind of a thread, I worked on my hands and knees most of the time. I was earning about four pounds a week when I finished working at six to six. That was the best money I ever got. What do they want now? Under no pound a week. Plenty holidays with pay. Good pension scheme. Well, I don't think there's so much as they could do about it now at that time. Sixty or sin. Nobody seemed to bother. He just carried on. You practically worked naked in the early man. Just your clogs on. And sweat was running off you. Where did I wash at all? There were nowhere else to wash. It was a godsend when we got baths. We used to have at home. They used to grill holes and blast this coal down. And they'd done this one day, fired about seven or eight shots. And there were a fellow went in other who can see what they'd done. Shots. An art roof collapsed in. Collapsed at the top of him. And he was dead. <laughs> There were plenty actually. I had enough to mind my own work underground without bothering about housing conditions. There was some damned hard work and no money attached to it. I suppose the world, even now, isn't ready for people doing things too extraordinary. You've got to fit in. If you Go to Wigan of a Saturday night, stop there all night, don't come home till 12 o'clock the next day. People think you're crazy or there's something going on there. They're not willing to accept it and say, oh, they probably have a very good time doing that. Come to the market and sample an OG. Come to the fair for a thruppenny thrill. Sell him a tube or a tumbler of strychnine. If you don't, there's plenty of fathers that will. If you don't, there's others that will. But what shall we do with the ugly ones, the ones with nothing to sell? The failures, the fumbling, muddly ones, who never do anything well. Never remember their name or number, and lose their place in the queue. And what can you do for the ugly ones? when they can't do a thing for you. You didn't think then that times would ever alter. You just thought it would always be the same. You never thought it would be times like these. Then there was no television. There used to be a nice parade on Wiggle Lane of a Sunday night, you know, that got the weekend over. Then you worked all week again then, put wait for next. And there were no money. You only got a, a shilling pocket money. And it was a uh, the sort train uh, into Wigan. That was return. Only four was return. Uh, six from the dan dance players. And at tums for a packet of six. Packet of six for tums. Well, that was the shilling gun, you see. That was the good old days then. These days, I don't think society's provided the right kind of entertainment for its young people. I mean, why should everything be left to us? After all, you've got to remember why people come down to Wigan. Records, for instance. I've got a stall on Berry Market, which isn't far from Wigan. Now, a lot of the music we play comes from rare discs, demos of American imports. 
If they were on the open market, they might only be worth about 65p. Because you can't easily get the records, there's quite a flourishing business which has grown up. I mean, if you've been dancing to that record for about three years, well, you're naturally going to want to own it. I don't think there's any other situation in life where, you know, you can be totally for something, but just not be able to have it. So the business side of Northern Soul started very simply. The clubs and the discotheques started playing more and more obscure records because they kept the sound unique and special. So the records were like collector's items. If a particular record was very rare, when somebody had unearthed a copy, naturally they'd want more than a pound for it. They'd want a few pounds, five or ten pounds. More than the people were earning in a week, in some cases. So, uh, naturally the price of records spiraled, but still spiraling. 40, 50 pounds. Nothing for a very rare record. 50 quid, original, back rate, no. I think the top price that anyone has ever paid for an American record was uh, something called Seven Day Lover by James Fountain. It was extremely rare. And this guy paid £170 for it, just for a single. But about a month later, it was released in England. And you could buy it from any uh, department store for 65p. And he had this record they paid £170 for. But he wasn't necessarily heartbroken or disappointed, because he still had it on the original label. <laughs> living in Wigan shut down, you know, it's the only thing I look forward to, because that's where all my mates are. I have no other way of getting in touch with anybody. Life would be just a big bore, wouldn't it? That would be all there is to it, like this here. <laughs> it might not look boring, but it is when you're doing it every day, and it's hard work, you know, gives you muscles, <laughs> let's say. casino finished, I'd either try and look for another all night similar to it, or else I'd just stop going out, I think. You know, I'd just stop in and deteriorate. <laughs> People who do shut clubs down, and they probably think they've just uh, cleared the city of a lot of bums who used to come in every Friday night. They probably think, you know, it wasn't needed. Well, surely that's no way to be. If you know a lot of people and very friendly with them, for a council to just shut a club down, and you'll never ever see them people again in your whole life. Well, that you know, that's that's affecting people's lives just by a stroke of the pen. Magic of Wigan. I don't know. It's hard to put into words. It's just uh, it's walking under the arches on a Saturday night and getting on the last bus to Wigan and seeing everybody there and everything tied in with Wigan is part of the experience. Uh, the ending. They play the last three records every week. Toby Legend. Time will pass you by. Jimmy Radcliffe. Long after tonight is all over. And the last records. Dean Parrish. I'm on my way. None of them are very rare, but build a certain magic to them, it, they've got the kind of ending feel. The end of an all-nighter when glasses are being collected, the coke bottles push away and uh, everybody's got the coats on, they're all off to catch the trains and it's like the words of the show is over now, it's time to go. In fact, the mornings tend to be a bit of an anticlimax. Everyone's tired. Some people go straight to another club in another part of the country for an all-day session. Others go down to the swimming pool for a cup of coffee and a swim to wake you up. But the fact is that if Wigan shut down, if I just heard during the week that that was it, that was the last night at Wigan you've just had last week, like, and there was no next week, well, uh, I wouldn't know what to do. I feel like, uh, Instant nostalgia. That would be it. You think, God, I'm going to be looking back for the rest of my life. I won't really be able to cope with life for the next few years. I'd have to sort out again, sort my life out again. What am I going to do now? What's uh, 
what's my lifestyle going to be like? Where am I going to go? I couldn't start going to it. Normal clubs tend to laugh at everybody. They seem a bit ridiculous. Well, I mean, say, I think we were happy in them days of what we are now. We seemed to enjoy ourselves with little money. We used to play at cricket and football and, and all that, you know. Come to the market and sample an OG. Come to the fair for a threepenny trill. Sell him a two or a tumbler of strychnine. If you don't, there's plenty of others that will. If you don't, there's others that will. But what shall we do with the ugly ones, the ones with nothing to sell? The failures, the fumbling, muddly ones who never do anything well. Never remember their name or number And lose their place in the queue And what can you do for the ugly ones When they can't do a thing for you? Dress yourself smart for the pace setter's party Dance to the swing of the trend setter's call the prince is cool in an Aston Martin Eyeing Cinderella, she's the belle of the ball Cinderella is the belle of the ball But what shall we do with the ugly ones The crippled, the sick and the old Who have got anything left to do But shroud themselves off from the cold Give them a penny, they haven't got any it's time for the charity game But we can't change the rules for the ugly ones And nobody here's to blame Socialist worker, only ten pence The boss feared a midget starting to fidget Soon it'll be his turn to go The flesh and the fur are starting to stir Hurry up dear or we'll miss the show Be quick We'll miss the show. But what shall we do with the ugly ones, the freaks with nothing to sell? The stupefied, stunted, shell shocked ones in their halitosic hell. They can't stand the pace of the status race or cash in on the rush to rebel. And there's nothing to do for the ugly ones, the ones with nothing to sell.